get over here to this good bit in case he gets over to this bit. Uh, this is first in best dress. Do ever get his first in it? Uh, she's a race now. I feel like he just hammered her down because I think the fucking sock came out of the exhaust. He's coming. Fuck is trying to cut us off. Let's get in front. We're just about to see the pot, so I hope you don't run over it. Yep. They're fucking throwing him in fast. Not as fast as us. What was that, Squeeze? Shoot in front of Glenn. Oh, all right. Fuck. What the fuck are you doing, mate? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> He's turning with us. <laughs> I can put my pots wherever I want, but no one's stopping me from putting my pot next to someone else's. Fucking Jesus. I haven't had a fucking shot like this for a long fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. He just threw a fucking pot in there. Yeah, kind of an act, isn't it? Yeah. That's just no fucking. <laughs> Fuck me. I've never fished around Bryce before, but if he does that to other people, he'll fuck it. He'll get his head belted in or fucking shot. It's officially hunting season for the lobster men of Tasmania. The prized rock lobsters are running hot. The best restaurants in the world want southern rock lobster. When you got one of ours sitting in the center of the table, their mouths are dribbling, going, I can't wait to get into Squizzy's lobster. Mate, awesome feeling. What are you up to first, Bryce? Mackerel. The fleet's been grounded, waiting for the price per kilogram to rise. But some skippers are ready to take a gamble. Tony, I'll just go a little bit more. Catching lobsters is just not chucking the pot in the water and hopefully one goes in it. It all starts at the wharf. Squizzy, along with his decky Tabor from the Bold Contender, are betting the price will climb any day now. Getting a jump on the rest of the fleet will pay dividends. Hear the sound of that? $1,000 notes going into the Volvo tent. And they're not the only ones with the same plan. Is Daddy going to see today? Yeah, you're going to see Daddy in 10 days? Yeah. That's great pop, isn't it? With a legacy to uphold, and a family to feed. The pressure is on for the Chieftain crew. All right, you gonna put lasagna sheets away, Bubba? Say beep beep, Mama. Greenhorn skipper Bryce and Decky Lockie can't afford any mistakes. Good job. More? Oh, I don't know if we have more, Bubba. So Lockie and I on this trip, we need three things. We need bait, fuel and food. Oh, I think the pump stopped. Oh, that's all there is. Those three things, if we run out of one, we're stuffed. The fuel truck's got no fuel left, so we weren't able to fill the boat up completely. Squizzy took all the fuel. It's a little bit annoying, because he'd like to be able to fill the boat up completely, but Bryce won't be happy about that. Nice. You know, I thought all the fun and games were going to start when we are at sea. I didn't think I'm going to start on the wharf. Less fuel will mean a shorter trip and fewer lobsters for the Greenhorn. Fucking squizzy. <laughs> While the bold contender crew cash in. What are we talking about, Bryce? Bryce? Bryce! I don't know what we're talking about that fuck with. <laughs> what about rice? We're talking about rice. Well, that's all right. I can work with that. I can work with that. I love games, so that, that'll work. 
Weather looks all right, Bryce. Yeah. I might follow you around the, the south, mate. Go around like, the west as well. Like normal. Like normal. I'll just shoot where you shoot. Yeah. You throw one, I'll throw one. Just give us a little bit of space this time, mate. That's right, that's right. All right, mate. Best. No I'll see, see you. I'll chase you down. Yep. Good luck. You got any bananas on board this trip? Hey? You got any bananas? No. Yeah. Better not have. Better not have, mate, I'll tell you. I'll check everything. I'll check oh, the bed you too. You won't find them. You worry it's a, it's me, a fruit, mate. There's no need to get angry about a fruit. You worry me. I hate bananas on a boat. It's bad luck. Even if I don't know they're on there, it's still going to bring me bad luck. And he, at the end of the day, he's a, he is a little sneaky little shit, so he probably would do something like that to me. We're just heading out there. We're just coming out of Dover Bay. 25 nautical miles south, aboard the Anson's Bay, veteran skipper Snotty has the jump on the boys from Margate. New wet weathers, boys are getting looked after. The boys can get their gear on and start getting a bit of bait in the pots and see if we can catch a cray again. <laughs> the Anson's Bay is crewed by Decky Kai. Fuck them big cunts are a cunt to cut. If yep. they weren't half frozen, they'd be fine, wouldn't they? Yeah, they wouldn't be And bad. Snotty's son, Ryan the next generation of the Jager fishing dynasty. Well, I'm the fifth generation fisherman, and Ryan loves his, he loves his fishing, so I'm hoping he decides to take the boat after that. Like, when I retire, I really hope he does, because he'll make a bloody good fisherman. I know he will. All three skippers some of the country's most hardcore lobster men will fight it out in the same prime hunting ground on Tasmania's west coast. But on the way, they'll stop at South Cape, a halfway point. There's lobster to be caught there, if you get the right spot. If I'm the last one there and I'm left with the dirty old leftover spots that I don't think are any good, I mean, that's going to cost us. What's going on, mate? Glenny boy, how are you? Good, what's happening? Oh, finally steaming past your hometown, buddy. Ran out, oh, the fuel truck ran out of fuel because Squizzy took it all. The fuel truck ran out of fuel? The fuel truck ran out of fuel because Squizzy hogged all the fuel on me. Oh, he's up to playing games already. <laughs> I don't sort of trust Squizzy. Like, I've give up nearly asking him what he catches because I think he lies to me. What's Squizzy? Is he telling you what he's doing, is he? Nah, he hasn't said what he's doing. Ah. I guess we'll come across you tonight. Yeah, no worries then, old boy. Yep, all good doggies. Talk to you soon. So, that sort of thing pisses you off a bit because it's like you like to go away knowing you've got enough fuel. You don't want to be worrying about not having enough fuel, so yeah, I don't know where he'll go there, old Bryce. That'd piss me off, like just, just for me um, mental stability, I suppose you'd say. But you still on 19 squeeze? Just check up on your roof. It's with all those bananas on board, mate. If you open your hatch in your warehouse, there might be one sitting right there. You never know. I think most fishermen have got a superstition, really. I don't like to leave on Fridays. I don't really like to wear red undies on the boat. Don't ask me why, but I just don't. <laughs> There's no bananas on a boat. Not even banana milkshakes, banana lollies, nothing. Anything with banana in it is not allowed. I think superstitions are for people that just don't know how to blame themselves. I think Squizzy needs a few bananas on his boat because it's going to stop his asshole getting jealous of his mouth. Stop the shit. I better not find any. Otherwise, that boat's gonna look like a took farm. Ah, uh, good thing we bought a couple of extra punnets of eggs anyway, so remember you're dealing with children. While the Greenhorn and Squizzy fight over fruit. Yep. Snotty's focused on fishing. First pot. We got here first, so I'm not sure where the boys are planning on where the boys are planning on going. But I guarantee one thing: we'll we'll, we'll have our pots in the, the 
flatter sort of area because we get first pick of it, so it's a matter of whether that's going to pay off for us or not, I don't know. Snoddy will choose the spots to drop each pot based on years of experience. Yep. It's up to the lobsters if they actually climb in. I'm about to pull out me, what I call me secret weapon. <laughs> the old Ford face and transducer. Oh, I don't use this very often. Normally I know where I'm going. That means we can get, safely get in along the shore and that's looking forward all the time for us. So if there's any pulleys or rocks up in front of us, I can see and like we'll just go slow, I can pull her up and reverse off them so we don't hit them and sink, hopefully. I've never ever sunk a boat. We don't want to hit a rock. We just, like, honest, we do not want to hit a rock. In close is where you find the biggest lobsters. For Snotty, it's a risk worth taking. Yep. It's giving me a little bit of a false reading there at the minute because we've just got a little bit of white foamy water here just where there's been a bit of swelling. It's just foamy, so it's just picking that up and telling me there's a rock there, but I'm pretty sure there ain't. Yep. Yeah, bloody Squeezy's managed to get in front of us, so we're going to need to... Yeah, Lockie's running to get his wets on now. Zeroing in on South Cape, the bold contender and the chieftain are racing for the next best spot. I reckon he's about to start shooting at the same time as us, so it's going to be a bit of a race to get him in, I think. Bryce is following me because he knows this is my backyard. If I was Bryce, I'd be following me. Seems to be he's heading out that way, but we're going a bit more inshore. We'll see where he goes. I need to get my pots in the water for Bryce. You ready? Yep. Set. Yep. With 52 pots to drop, Bryce needs to make each one count. I'm a green on. There's no doubt about it. I've got a lot to prove. I don't want to stuff this up. Away from the battle between Squizzy and Bryce. Yeah, we just chucked our last pot in. We just brought 10 out here a bit deeper. Veteran skipper Snotty has run his own race. His pots are in first. Because I didn't know where I was going or what we are probably going to catch in there, I just wanted to hedge our bets a little bit. So at least we got some pots in some different places. So I'm not expecting to kill the pig here, that's for sure. Squizzy's ringing. What's going on? No, not much. We've just finished set them, just going in to drop anchor, so. Yeah, Roger Dodger, oh, well, that's something. Beat, beat nasty. Uh, did you pinch all the fuel off, Bryce? Did you take more than you thought or not? I've lost you. You there? Nah, you're gone. Squizzy can be a bit cagey, like, you know, I don't believe everything he says. This spot we're in now, a bit of a funny spot. It's a bit of a, what we call like a halfway fishing patch. A lot of boats will just quickly have one night here and then they'll get going. And that's what we're gonna do tonight as well. When we got to South Cape, we're running late. Now we've definitely got these pots in a lot later than I wanted. And these fish could be on the run and we might've just missed that bus. Few rocks in here that we can hit. Anything on here that's got white, we come across that, it'll rip a hole in the bottom of the boat when swimming ashore. Try and avoid those however you want to work along the edges, you want to get in close to them. You know, you're looking for for bottom like this, press the button. Yeah. You know, pot the land in there, it'll be good for us. We'll get the nicer, redder fish. It's just a gamble we have to take. You could get a lobster a pot, you could get 
five lobsters a pot, so we're not really sure what we're going to get. However, I'll be happy with 150. But if this spot's good, then on the way home, we might have a final shot here. In lobster fishing, time is money, and money is on their mind. You're squishing these to hurry up and set these fucking pots. Yep. At the end of the day, it's a business, so you're very competitive. You want to get out there and do the best by your deck end, getting the best price, getting heaps of lobsters on board. You just want to know, I caught more than him. Got her on there, Glenn. The success of this trip rides on the price lobster buyers are willing to pay. Get on, boy. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've got weird feelings about this price at the moment. Oh, part of me is telling me I should have stayed home, but the other part's going the gamble might be worth it. But you know, going black and red on roulette doesn't always end up well either. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, you got him in the water. That's the main thing. All you can do is try it. Fucking you and me both, mate. Yeah, we'll just find out. Morning, mate. If the price stays at the current market rate of $45 per kilo, the gamble has failed. Roger, Roger, talk soon. You know, we've got quota, bait, fuel. If the price goes to 50, 55, we could be laughing. It could be like fantastic, perfect timing. It's all gone so well for us. But I don't want to outlay $45,000 if I don't have to. <laughs> So tomorrow, what matters is what's in our pots. That's what matters. First part of the trip, hopefully there's a few lobsters in them. I don't have high hopes because uh, I haven't shot this area for uh, probably five to 10 years, I reckon. See how we go this morning. Hopefully they're all right. Always like to start on a high. It's like going out, having a game of cricket, getting a six first ball. You're way and going. <laughs> Looks all right from here, but you, you don't never know to uh, take and put some measure on them. I'm competitive. Ooh. Always want to catch more. I let my results speak for myself. Yeah! Six is all right. We get a six pot, six pot average around 300 crows, mate, for the shot. I just love catching lobsters. I'll put my heart and soul into setting the pots. Don't worry about that. You're out there to make money. Yeah, a few more in this one. Four so far. A bit better than the last few. You're pulling a pot and you don't know what's in it. Hopefully, little pots of gold. <laughs> We've just pulled nine pots and we've probably got about 20, so, yeah. There's potential. There's fish in there, you've got a chance. <laughs> Squeezy, what are you doing, man? What's going on, mate? I'm looking for a crayfish. We're looking for a crayfish? We're looking for a crayfish, too. <laughs> what have we got? We might have 40, probably, roughly. How many you got here to tell me bullshit or the truth? Mate, we've only pulled 10 pots. You've only pulled 10? Hey, I know what you like. You probably only got fucking 300, did you? What's the plan? We're going west? We've got the weather for up there. Let's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now nah, it looks good, so... I'll just fucking... We'll just get our gear up. No worries, mate. Thank you. See ya, bye. Roger. Cheers. Bye. See ya. He's going to the west coast. I'm going to the west coast. We need to get our gear up before him and beat him there. That's what we need to do. That's our first plan. We're 10 pots in. We've got 20 odd fish. We're not going too bad, as long as I'm catching more than Bryce. I'm a green on, there's no doubt about it. So I'm here to prove that I'm not just on Dad's boat. I'm here to be fishing amongst the bigger guys. Yeah, five fish in a pot's good, but it's not really good enough. We want to see more. Bryce took over skippering the Chieftain when his father went into semi-retirement. Bryce's father, Kent, has got 
the respect of the whole fishing community. I've got a lot to prove. People always look at me as if I've been handed everything on a silver platter. I know what I've been given, and I know what I've worked for, and other people can think what they want. If uh, Bryce, old man, wasn't Kent, um, I probably wouldn't give him as many brownie points. On. Come on. With every single pot. All right, we're going to look at fish. The pressure is on Bryce to perform. So we pulled half the gear, we pulled 26 pots. We'll see how this morning's gone so far. Dad's not going to hand anything to me, he never has. That's not how he works. If we have to tread on some toes to catch lobsters before anyone else, I'll do it. I don't mind treading on a few toes here and there. We pulled 26 pots and we got 53, so... Would have been good to see at least 80, 90 out of that first half, so we'll just have to see what the next half's got. And we've got 100 in this next half. I've been pretty happy. We got our gear in second and then Squizzy steamed a bit further, so that could have been a bad choice for Squizzy, I don't know. If he does bad this morning, then it's probably got a bit to do with uh, he got him in too late for a night shot. Hopefully that happened to him, that'll be good. That's a nice looking pot, that one. I haven't been to South Cape for a few years. I don't think I'll leave it for another couple of years, that's for sure. Twelve. Yeah! <laughs> that's not bad when you get a twelve. I'm born to win. Yeah, baby! Woo! Are we in front? I think so. Nice pot, seven nice red ones in that. One pot to go. The shot looks pretty good. We've got to be happy with what we got. I haven't counted them down yet, but it's going to be the high 170. It's pretty good this time of year. There's no bloody way I'm going to tell them what I'm catching. I'll downplay it every time. We'll just keep them guessing. Well, that square pot, eh? Loving it. And Glenn's just going past us now. And I want to get in front of him. Because I, I know where he's going up the west coast, and I know no one's been up there for a while. And that's what he'll be thinking, too. And one thing he will be thinking, Squizzy won't go where I was going to go. Well, Squeezy's winding us in there by the looks of it. He must be keen to get up and get the spots before us. He tends to like the same sort of area I like up there too, so... Yeah, I reckon he's got the hammer down a bit to get past us to try and get the best spots, I reckon. As the skippers prepare to race to the prime West Coast fishing grounds... Ryan reckons this is the biggest one we got this morning. What do you, what are you guessing? I'm gonna guess... 2.4 kilo. They begin to tally their South Cape shot. About 2.7 kilo. Good guy. Yeah. He's a good dog, isn't he? Yeah. Nice big solid, solid bugger. The leader will earn more than just bragging rights. The biggest and best load will get the attention of buyers and a lucrative payday. For a shop, we didn't really know what was doing and just floating around, but I'm happy. Female 107. Was that sized? Fuck, that's, I've never done that. I just, no. We don't need to go throwing $40 notes over, mate. I mean, Lockie basically just threw over two $20 notes. It's just a quick mistake, but if he makes it again, it's out of his pay. Nine, ten sized fish out of that one pot, but because Lockie threw a size one back for the later date, we 
nine size fish out of that pot. So that's our best pot this morning. That's our money pot. So that's that's better than nothing. I don't think it'll get us to 150. However, there's about five or six sizes in this pot too. So if they stay like this, we might hit 100 at the moment. But um, maybe I should have gone further inshore. At the moment, the shot's looking a bit shit. But if we're going up the west coast, we need to get these pots up now. It's time to go. It's time to beat Squizzy and Glenn. Hey, potty, potty, pot! But that could be easier said than done. We've got two pots missing at the moment. I'm not... I don't know if they're missing or I've just... I've missed them. Hey, potty, potty, pot! It's about $800 worth of pots down the drain. What's worse is the multiplier effect. Two less pots for every drop over the course of 10 days at sea could lose him up to $4,000. All I can do is steam the whole way back down where we've shot, and then we'll um, we'll see, see if we can't find them. Morning, how are you? How are you going with them, mate? Oh, I'm getting there. But I think I'm missing two pots from off the southeast cape head, right on the head there. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, fucking Jesus. How are the fish treating you? Yeah, I think we may just hit 100, so. Um, ah, right. We got a bit over 100. It, it, it could have been worse, I know that, because we pulled the first pot and there was only one cray in it, so he was a measure, but I thought, oh, not looking good. Not sure how it went against Glenn. Uh, Roger, Roger then. I'll talk to you soon. Look, sorry, mate. Cheers, mate, mate. I'd love to beat Squizzy, only because I know it'll piss him off. It's going to be hard to beat Squizzy if I can't find these two pots. A pot ahoy! Oh, I wonder if that sized female you threw back swung back in this pot, Loggy. Oh, don't know, babe. I wonder if we'll hit 100. The missing pot. A bit of a long line, this one. An orgy of sharks. Yep, we've got dollars. an orgy of sharks. All they want is the bait. Bait saver destroying shark. Worthless. I have a feeling it's. That's where it was meant to be. I found it! I found it, Ross! Ah, Ross! Ah, Ross! Ah, Ross! Found ah, it! Ah, I want more! <laughs> Fingers crossed, there's nothing better than a pot full coming up. The final pot of the morning. This will determine whether we have over 100 or not. Come on! And the answer is. Looks like this pot might just get us over that line. We've ended up with 110, so that's not too bad. Around the west we go. That's where the real fishing is. The Squizzy's there, it must be good. Squizzy leads the pack with 174. Snotty scored 118. While the Greenhorn lives up to his name with 110. A good trip will see each skipper catch in excess of 2,000 lobsters. There's a long way to go. Go! Hey, how you going? All right. Are you in front of us or behind us? I can see a mast, but I think that's Glenn. But I'm outside you. How'd you go this morning? Oh, you can, we're going to tell numbers, or is this just Bryce telling numbers and Squizzy not saying nothing? <laughs> No, I was going to tell you the truth, only because I got a crap shot. What did you get? 74. I'll move over, mate. I'll skip that thing for you. A good start to the trip, as Squizzy would say. Yeah, baby, whatever he says. Squizzy the loser. You know what you need? You need to look for the banana on your boat. You know what he looks like now? He's got a little face, he's got little eyes, a little moustache. I think you're just trying to psych me out. Maybe it worked. Maybe that's what happened overnight. Maybe you were so psyched out. I have a couple more shots like that, I'll believe you, and then I'll go looking for it. 
Look, Squizzy said he got 74, but I wouldn't be surprised if you can't put a one in front of it and he got 174, to be honest with you, because, <laughs> like, it wouldn't surprise me. See you later, loser. Have a good one. Roger, see ya. Hey, Loggy. Yeah? We beat Squizzy. Didn't we? Yeah, beat him. This oh, is... yeah. Rub, rub, the, rub the nani. Rub the nani. This is nani Squiz. Or oh, squishy. Squishy Squiz. Squizzy rub the wood. I think Squiz is very angry, so it won't surprise me if all of a sudden the bowl contender starts using a lot more fuel because he's going to get to the next spot first because he knows where the fish are. I think that's why he doesn't want to fish along the south coast, just because he can't fish the south coast. Very few people are very good on the south coast. In saying that, I am no good on the south coast, so I'm surprised to actually beat him. You never tell the truth. I don't tell the truth. I don't tell them what I'm catching when I'm at sea. I'll tell them after I've caught them. But why would you tell anyone what you're catching when you're at sea as a fisherman, as a competitor? Just fill them full of shit and let them keep guessing. That's the name of the game. We've just got to the west coast where I wanted to set them. Hopefully all ours are in the water before everyone else's. What? Pots over there. Oh, great. One pot or multiple pots? Multiple. Looks like the bulk tin was a bit too slow on this occasion. We've been beaten. Yep. 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 All right, I'll send you a photo of the plotter. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Pete. Pete. That was Dad. Dad would love to see me at least flog Squizzy. He doesn't believe I could flog Glenn. I don't think anyone can flog Glenn. The only person who can flog Glenn is himself. Or his brother or his dad. Nah, nah, Glenn shits on them. You reckon? Oh, fuck yeah. I reckon Glenn was only a day old and he was fist fighting a lobster in a rock. That man can literally put a pot in a bathtub and lobsters will get in there. They just climb through those pipes just to get in his pot. That is how good he is. Uh, where we're going now, he's got 30 years experience on me. I've got nothing. I've got, what, two weeks experience around where we're going? Hey, I've been up the west more than you. Lockie's fished more of the west coast than I have, so maybe, maybe I'll go on deck and Lockie can shoot the gear in. Dad and I have already had a quick chat. I've got a pretty good idea where we want to be, but it's going to come down to where's Squizzy going to stop, where's Glenn going to go. I know where I want to go, so hopefully no one gets in between me and what I want to do. Squizzy had the same wish, but it wasn't granted. Another boat has beaten the bold contender to this prized west coast spot. That sucks, Toves, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah. So who the fuck is it? Hey? Eh? Something, t it's TU. I see a TU on it. Triton, isn't it? I rocked up where I want to set me pots, where I thought Glenn would go. And Peter McKenzie's here, the mad genius. So he's actually outsmarted all of us. He got here first. He's supposed to have retired last year, but he's still here. He's one of the best fishermen in Tasmania. Now I'm just trying to work around his gear, so I don't want to get too close to him. You get too close to someone, they catch nothing, you catch nothing, then you just have an argument over nothing, because you never caught nothing. It's an unwritten rule. Just don't shoot too close to someone. Give them some room. You know, you don't go over there and cut your next-door neighbour's grass. I can see Squizzy. Squizzy's up there in front of us, and it looks like he's setting gear where I normally set gear, to be honest with you. We're too fucking late, mate. It's a good spot here, too. I like it. I think he might be playing games with me. <laughs> you on this one, Glenn? Yes, mate. Am I putting him in the right spot? <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> No dramas, you've better. We'll go further. 
<laughs> I've worked around Squeezy a fair bit around that area, and I've never seen Squeezy set pots there in my life. I don't know what he's up to, to be honest with you. He's cost us a few fish there, hasn't he, mate? What happened last time we shot it? Talking 300s, weren't we? Uh, yeah. You might as well get back in here. Yeah. <laughs> that hurt having to leave that. That was me go-to. That hurt. It did. It, it, it hurt. Mm. Next move, we're going up to Green Island now, so we'll just leave him with it and, yeah. Well, I hope he remembers that, that we've left him with it. It would have been pretty arsehole of me to start setting pots around him, so I had to leave him with it. Even further behind, with everything to gain and nothing to lose, is Greenhorn skipper Bryce. Oh, Squizzy beat us to the first bit of bottom here, so yeah, he's Squizzy now, shooting his gear in. He got the jump on us, so Glenn's got the jump on us up there, so it looks like we're going to have to just keep going past. Are you starting about where you are, Glenn, or are you going to keep going? Nah, mate, we're going up a bit further. Yeah, no worries. I can't see any pots there. I know your old man loves it. Yeah, bloody looks like it. I can't fucking see shit. It's a bit glare, Angie. Nah, I mean the fucking blotto. It's not that many marks on it. That's just nothing but marks. Oh! <laughs> oh! Hey, why don't we just chuck him in, mate? What's what we're doing? No worries, get out of me gulch. Bryce is calling it his gulch. <laughs> How can you say shit like that? Like, he's calling it his gulch and I've never ever seen him in there and I've spent a lot of time at Green Island, so... I just want to get him in. We've got Bryce coming up here now. <laughs> Dad did say avoid the gulch and keep on going, but the last time I was there, I had a good shot there and I just wanted to put a few pots there, sink a few pots. I just want to get over here to this good bit in case he gets over to this bit. Fucking Glenn. Glenn had the same idea. Hey, mate, this is first in best dress. Whoever gets his first in it. So uh, she's a race now. We're both going to the same bit. She's on. Like Donkey Kong. Well, I let him get in front of us. He's got his revs down as well. Fuck is trying to cut us off. Let's get in front. Oh, I don't want Bryce getting in front of me. I feel like he just hammered her down because a heap of soot came out of exhaust. I wish he'd just fuck off. I thought we were just having a bit of fun. We're just about to set a pot, so I hope you don't run over it. He's going to block us in. <laughs> He's turning Willis. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, mate? What the fuck are you doing? How would I describe him right now? If I had a gun or shooting, of course it's going to affect me catch. Yep. I'm not getting the pots exactly where I want because I'm rushing. It'll lose me money. They're fucking throwing them in fast. Bloody Snood's blocking us in, and we can't get in there, so he's, he's blocked us. The Fisherman's Code. It's a book that has no cover and no pages. It is completely and utterly made up inside a 40-year-old fisherman's head, and I don't know it. We were sitting, and I think he was trying to get this spot, but we got to put in before him, so that's good. Won't get the spot now. I can put my pots wherever I want. There's no one stopping me from putting my pot next to someone else's. Almost, almost looked like he was trying to do it to piss you off, but I don't think he was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know if he knows what he's even doing, but I don't know what he's fucking thinking. I didn't want to lose two of my fucking favourite spots. Squizzy took one of the cunts. I weren't going to lose another. Yeah, Glenn's not the biggest fan of having people fish around him. He likes his little, his little areas. He likes his peace and quiet. So he doesn't want a big green-looking boat up his ass. I don't think. It says under Anson's Bay in my book of rules. Stay the fuck out of my way. Something I must have missed when I hovered over this page. However, he's on the move. He thinks I'm going this way, so what I'm going to do here is I might try and sneak up the inside of him. I saw a little opening. There's a little shallow patch that often you probably can't go over. The tide was up, and I thought this could be an opportunity to get through there. I'd love to know what he's thinking. What was that, Squeeze? Shoot in front of Glenn. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. 
He's just for all fucking pot in there. Yeah, it's kind of an act, isn't it? Yeah. That's just no fucking... <laughs> Fuck me. I honestly, when I get that wild, I could nearly ram that. Like, that's his father's boat, and I respect his father, but, like, I could have honestly just put my boat into gear and rammed him. Like, I'm wild. I am, like, honestly wild. I've never fished around Bryce before, but if he does that to other people, he'll get his head belted in or shot. Looks like he's turned around and gone the other way, so he's given up because it's not... It's not a place you really want to be stuffing around. I feel bad for pissing him off, but... but shit happens. Dad told me to do it, Glenn. It wasn't me, I promise. I'm not fucking talking to you yet, Bryce. You can get fucked. I don't know what, what Kent would say about it, but, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he'd see my side of it and why I'm upset. That's fucking the worst I've had done to me. I would have just fucking slaughtered it, I reckon. It's not my ground. I don't own it. But you just can't go and jump in front of someone and start setting pots when someone's setting pots. Fucking ropeable now. Fucking ropeable.